the longest poem in this collection, there are eight poems, the narrative, the historical, is his account of the uh, War of Lung Lungen from 1850 to 1853, which was the longest frontier war. Now, David tells the story um, as a narrative, but he is an Imbongi, and so he passes judgment on people. Particularly, he's got a lot of very nasty things to say about the great hero of the frontier, Sir Harry Smith, and he's got some very trenchant comments. But the poem is divided into 19 cantos. And he ends the story of the War of Mlanjen, and he reflects on what he's just said, and then he, try, then he proceeds to relate this historical past to the present. And as an imbong, he passes judgment, he encourages. So we want to read you a passage from near the end, after he's told the story, where he writes about Mlanjen, who was a young 16-year-old um, diviner, perhaps, who uh, encouraged uh, people to take part in a particular ritual cleansing. Now, Manis, he says, this shouldn't be called the War of Nanjian because it's not his war. And he was actually a marginal figure. <coughs> but Manis, he turns as an immortal to assess um, Nanjian, the son of Kala. And <coughs> Pam will read the passage in Kosa and then I'll finish with the translation for those who don't follow Kosa. <coughs> strives for victory and thinks of nothing else. If he dies, he dies. If he wins, he wins. He's less concerned for his personal safety, fixed on the life of the nation. His deeds dedicated to generations to come. So it was for Carlos' son. Every effort he expended, moving around surreptitiously, blowing and spitting his charms, was designed to secure their freedom to secure his land's liberation, its fruits for its children to savor. There's no disgrace in failure, however undesirable, since defeat can occasion contempt, living with social mockery. The real disgrace is cowardice, to sit with folded arms 
inflicting not the slightest scratch while your property is plundered, borne off before your very eyes against your dearest desires. We should not mock the son of Carl, judging him a contemptible fraud, simply because Cosa was crushed. Let's rather accept he did his best, striving heart and soul for victory. Fighting can have only two results. Yes, either you win or you lose. Defeat is no crime if you've given your all. We have a habit, noble people, current among our fathers and present down to this day. When those we love succumb and the remainder are expelled, we start to turn on each other. We blame so-and-so for the situation. If it wasn't for this, that wouldn't have happened. We indulge in mutual recriminations while time and tide wait on no man. We fail to construct a new ship when the one we've used has sunk. Let's say it again to drive the point home. Carlos' son should not be blamed. The hero's kin are ever tearful. They're never free from apprehension because those who take up arms perspire droplets of blood to benefit those to come. Some of them lose their lives in the struggle and are buried there till the end of time, a sacrifice for their fellows.